If you have faith to believe, if you have the knowing in your spirit that God is going to move, oh yes, you can lift your hands and just cry holy. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and we magnify you. Oh, come on. Why don't you just give the Lord another hand clap of praise? He's worthy of it. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Why don't you why don't you just why don't you just tell him, Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, right now. Oh yes, we thank you, Lord, for faith that cannot be overcome. We have a faith and a victory tonight that cannot be shaken. We have a faith that cannot be destroyed. Aren't you glad to know tonight you have something in you, living in you, that the devil can't do anything? thing with. Oh, come on tonight. I said God's put something in you that the devil can't do anything with. Some said, what is it? Is it a gift? It is a talent? No, sir. He put himself in you. And because, come on, greater is he that is in you than he that's in that world. Aren't you glad to know tonight that what's living inside of you is greater than a burden? It's greater than an affliction. It's greater than sin. It's greater than pain. It's greater than every battle I have to face, every storm I've got to go through, every dilemma I may have to struggle with in life. I know that what God has placed inside of me will always triumph over all the powers of the enemy. How many believe that tonight? What God has put on the inside of us, hell doesn't can't, can't do anything with. Hell cannot shake it. The enemy cannot destroy it. The enemy cannot stop Oh, come on, you ain't helping me tonight. I said what God has placed in us will always overcome if we rest our faith and rest our hope in that. Th come on, I, I want you to know tonight it's not about you and it's not about me, but this thing's always been and it always will be about Christ in us, the hope of glory. He is our ever-present help. He is our way maker. He he is our, come on. I said, whatever you need him to be tonight, that's exactly what he is. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I want us to know tonight that God has given you faith. And you don't have to have some extrinsic amount of faith to be able to stand in the face of the enemy. But all it takes is a faith that cannot be shaken and a faith that cannot be moved and a faith that cannot be wavered. All you've got to do is make up your mind by faith that I'm going to stand and I'm going to prevail and I am going to overcome and it doesn't matter whether you got saved yesterday or whether you got saved 30 years ago all you need to know is tonight that if I anchor myself in this faith that God has put in me there is nothing that the devil can do to stop me there's nothing the devil can do to hinder me there is nothing the devil can do that can break me or bind me. Come on. I wish you'd know tonight you don't have to live in fear and you don't have to live in bondage and you don't have to live in anxiety. You don't have to live in depression. You don't have to come on. I wish you'd hear me tonight. You don't have to live in discouragement. You don't have to live a life of defeat wondering whether or not you're going to make it. I say you can get up every day and say my foot is on the rock and I know in whom I have believed and I know that one way or the other I'm going to come through this and I will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony and I will prevail with a faith that cannot be shaken and a faith that cannot be destroyed. Why don't you give the Lord a shout of praise in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7. If you want to go with me real quick as we stand for the reading of God's Word, stay with me. I want to read this scripture and then we'll move on. But Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7. Very familiar scripture to every one of us and we could probably quote it without having to look it up. Matthew 7, verse number 7. He said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. And knock and it shall shall be opened unto you for every one that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open I said for everyone that 
Come on. You hear me? Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, somebody say everyone. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Can you say amen tonight? I, I want you to know this. I want you to know that there are some things that are never going to come to pass in your life until you pursue after it with everything that is within you. I said there are some doors in your life that are never going to be open until you persist knock upon it and let the Holy Ghost know I'm not leaving here until I get what I desire in God come on you hear me tonight I, I want this generation to know that somehow we have been taught to, that to ask more than once means that if we've asked the first time we ask out of faith but if we ask any more after that then we really wasn't sure in our faith the first time we asked and we have to go back because the rest of the time we ask out of unbelief, but can I tell you, that's not what this scripture is talking about. I want you to know there are going to be some times in your life that you got to lay some things in the hands of God, and you just got to stop worrying about it and say, Holy Ghost, you can take care of things that I can't take care of. But then, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is this, is that when you have a desire in your heart for something in God, that you say, Lord, I refuse to give up and I refuse to give in I refuse to walk away until I receive that thing which I have committed myself unto I refuse to walk away empty handed I refuse to walk away from the door I refuse to walk away in disbelief I say God if I've got to put up a tent and stay here all night I refuse to leave here until I have received until I have come on until I hear a door that is open in front of my face. Amen. There are some things that are not going to come to pass until you pursue after it and say I am not satisfied until I get what I'm looking for. I wonder how many times we've been so close to getting a miracle and we were one knock away from a door before God opened that thing and gave you that miracle. I wonder how close we were for revival breaking out in our church that God was getting ready to open a door and we got a little weary on the journey and we got a little discouraged we, 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 we sat down on our praise we sat down on our worship and God was ready to open a door and all it needed was just a little bit of knocking oh come on you hear me tonight I wonder if there's somebody in here tonight that would say God I am ready to receive what is behind the door I'm ready to receive what the Holy Ghost has ordained and chosen and called for my life I've sat back and wandered too long it's time for me to get up and pursue and take hold of that thing which God has orchestrated for my life why don't you give the Lord praise we were we were in we were in North Carolina a little over a month ago, I guess. and We pulled up to the church building, and we were sitting there for a little while before service started. And we pulled up to the side of the building, and on the side of the building there was a door. And as I looked at that door, I thought, well, we could go in that door. And then I thought, no, I can't get through that door because it doesn't have a doorknob. It doesn't have a latch. It doesn't have a keypad. It doesn't have anything. I thought, how in the world do you get through that door? There's no way you can get in that door. There was nothing. And there was nothing there. I mean, it was just a door. And I, I sit there for a minute. I thought, how do you get in that door? And then finally, the Holy Ghost had to slap me upside the head and said, the only way you can get through that door is to knock on it and the person on the inside grant you the access from the, come on. Ah, oh, come on. I, I, want, I want us to know that sometimes we have treated our faith like a Walmart door and we thought that if we just got close enough to it, it'd open. Because how many's ever had to use a key? to go to Walmart. No, sir. You don't have to get to the door and say open sesame. You don't have to knock. You don't have to do nothing. You just go to the door and you get close enough and the door is going to open and you can go to the inside. But I want you to know there's some things in God that you just can't get close enough and God's just going to give it to you. You can't say, well, I'm going to pray a little more than what I have been praying or I'm going to go to church a little more than what
what I've been going to church. I'm no, no, no. That's not how you get through. It's the place where you say, God, there's no, there's no way in through that door unless I knock on it, unless I stay there until you open it and allow me the access to get. Come on, I want, I want you to know tonight that revival can break out right here at Cornerstone Church if God could find a man or if God could find a woman who says, Lord, I'm not just going to try to get a little bit closer. Lord, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to be on that door until something happens. I'm not going to walk away. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. What I need is behind that door. What I need is in God. I don't need another emotion. I don't need another fix. I need a move of the Holy Ghost. I need an outbreak and an outpouring of the Spirit of God. There's a, there's a, there's a cry from the heavens. We have said, Lord, let us hear that sound from heaven. But I have to believe with all of my heart, we are never going to hear a sound from heaven until God hears a sound from this earth. Come on. How many of you, if somebody stood on your doorstep and beat on your door all day long, you don't sit on the couch and say, well, maybe they'll eventually find a way in. Or maybe somebody else will go. No, sir. When somebody's knocking on that door, unless you know somebody's coming and you don't want them in, come on. That's a whole different story. But I believe that if somebody stood and knocked on your door, there's something in you that gets up, goes over to that door, opens it, and see what they want on the other side. I believe there's a longing in God. There's a desire in God that he said, is there anybody that is desperate enough? Is there anybody who's hungry enough? Is there somebody who's thirsty enough to say, I have been to church. I've been through the routine. I've been through the emotion. I've been, come on, I've been through it. I've done it all. But I wish somebody would get desperate enough to where they say, I've had just a little and I've had just some, but I'm desiring more than what I have. I am not satisfied. I am not content. I am ready to receive something that I have not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God is set before you a door. You can stand and look at it if you want to, but if God could find somebody who's going to bombard heaven, who's going to knock until it opens, who's going to ask until you receive Who's going to seek until you find? I've, I've, Pastor, there's, as an evangelist, I've struggled for a long time. And I've wondered as I've, as I've preached and I've looked into the eyes of God's people. And I've looked and I've wondered, is there any desire in there? I've looked and sometimes I've wondered, are the lights on? Is anybody home? Come on, is there, is there any hunger in there? Is there any desire in there? Is there, any, is there anything in there that says, I'm ready for revival? Is there anything in there that says, I'm ready for a breakthrough? I'm ready for something something to happen. I've looked and I said God is there any desire in there because I thought for a long time that the worst thing that could ever happen is a child of God that loses their desire and has no desire for the things of God. I thought there's nothing worse than that and I thought that for a long time but then the Holy Ghost started dealing with my heart and I, felt, I, I was studying on that and I said well I got to that scripture and David said this. He said, he said one thing have I I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost started dealing with me and said yes there is something that is worse than a child of God that has no desire and I kept reading I said what is it Lord he said yes the one thing that is worse than a child of God that has, has lost their desire is a child of God that does have desire but yet never gets up and goes after and pursues after that thing which he desires oh yes come on I just I read yesterday I read a little thing that said five frogs were sitting on a wall and four decided to jump off and how many was left and it said some would say well one frog but the answer was no all five frogs because there's a difference in deciding to do something and actually doing something come on you hear me I don't want to have a desire and sit on the sideline and wonder what it could have been and wonder what what it should have been. I don't want to watch from 
a distance. There comes a time that you got to shift your faith into a spectator, into a participator, and say, I've been watching, I've been observing, but it is time for me to get up and go after that thing which God is calling me to. Oh, yes, I say tonight, if there's anything you could ever do, don't sit and hold your desire. Get up and go after it and pursue and press and say, I'm not leaving here until I get what I need in the Holy Ghost. Why don't you lift your hands tonight and say, God, I'm going to knock until this thing comes forth in my life. Oh, yes. I've, some say, well, you don't know where I'm, what I'm dealing with right now. You don't know what I'm up against right now. It doesn't matter what you're up against. Somebody say, I'm up against the wall. Well, you may be. You may be in a place where you don't feel like you can get up and do anything at all. But you know what all God needs is just a little bit of persistent faith. It's just something in there. Oh, yes. I said just a, hallelujah. Just a little bit of persistent faith like that woman who kept coming back to that unjust judge who was seeking after that thing which she desired. Oh yes, yeah, she was seeking after that. There was something she was longing for and that judge just kept pushing her off and saying no, 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 no. How many times have you walked away because you kept hearing a no and you kept feeling something telling you you couldn't. You felt something telling you you'd never be. Oh, but there was something in her that said I don't care how many times you tell me no. I don't care how many times you reject me. I am not going to be satisfied until I'm holding that desire in the palm of my hand. And finally, after persistently coming back and coming back, finally that unjust judge, that ruler, granted her her desire. And Jesus said if he's unjust and he can do such for that woman, he said, who do you think your father is who is just? Oh, come on, you hear me tonight. I want you to know there is no good thing that he will withhold to them that walk uprightly I, oh yes I believe it's about time for an anointing to fall on the body of Christ we have sat and we have thought about it we have thought about getting up we have thought about moving on but the only way you can get to the door and the only way you can be upright is you got to get up from where you are and make a move oh yes you've got to make a move God's waiting on somebody to say I've sat here long enough. I'm ready to go after it. I'm ready to hold it. I am ready to pursue the will of God for my life. Amen. It's a, it's a place where we come up against situations that, that make us feel like there is no hope and that there is no way that we can ever receive the promises of God that we can never receive God's goodness. As Pastor told you today, or just a few minutes ago, we got to Bristol, Tennessee this morning, and we were ready to hit. We were coming to Arkansas as far as I was concerned. And so we got there. We were supposed to fly out at 9.39. Next thing you know, it's 11.07 before we're flying out. That meant we missed our connecting flight in Atlanta. So as I'm there, we're trying to figure it out. They said the best we can do, get you out of Arkansas at 5 o'clock. I thought that's not good enough. We can't can't do it. There's no way we'll miss church. we got to have a way. And finally, the, the light bulb went off in my head. I said, well, can I go to Tulsa? He said, yeah, I can have you in Tulsa at 247. I said, let's do that. So we got on, got to Atlanta. We were in that airport, and we were, we were getting ready to go to our next flight. And I just asked God. I said, God, I said, as much stress as it's already been this morning and things have been turned around, I said, could you just let me, let us have one of those God moments? You know, just one of the I, I just ask I just real it was a simple prayer I said God could we just have a God moment today with all the things that we've already had to deal with I didn't even realize didn't even take into consideration that the ticket that they gave us said that you're in seat one one C and one D never I thought well that's the front row I've never sat in the front row before as we got on there there's that big fluffy chair got a blanket in it and a big fluffy pillow two bottles of already water sitting there waiting on us 
Amen. I thought, well, hey, man, what about this? I kicked back. Come on, I want you to know we ain't never rode first class, and I don't really care. I, I, I'd rather ride in the back as far as I'm concerned. But I sat down in that seat. All of a sudden, here she come. She had a basket full of goodies. She said, whatever you want, you can have. There was chocolate. There was bananas. There was cookies. There was, I thought, well, that sure beats the peanuts they usually give you when you sit back there. Amen. And so I thought, well, that's pretty nice. And then a few minutes later, she come with that basket again. She said, would you like anything else? I thought, well, I'm not used to this kind of treatment. Never did dawn on me or realize, come on, when they poured my ginger ale in a glass, I thought, my Lord, I'm sitting in first class. Never. Amen. All of a sudden, it hit me. I said, I don't know. Lord, you've got a good sense of humor, but I, I got a good feeling we're having a God moment right now. Come on. Somebody. Hallelujah. I want somebody to know God's about to give you double for your trouble. God's getting ready to turn this thing around. But if you'll keep on pressing and you'll keep on going and you won't let nothing stop you, you won't let nothing bind you, God's getting ready to open a door that no man can shut. God's getting ready to release and turn loose a blessing in your life. Why don't you give the Lord a shout of praise? Oh, sometimes, sometimes God just wants you to have a God moment where you, where you look at it a few minutes ago and it didn't look like that. It didn't look like it would ever turn around. It didn't look like it was going to work out in your favor. I was already texting Brother Kitty and said, Lord have mercy. I I'll let you know what happens with our flights. I was getting so nervous. I was getting bent out of shape. But then I just I just thought, Lord, we're, we're, we're meant to be there tonight. We are meant to be there tonight. It's not, it's not the will of God for us to be stuck in an airport. It is the will of God that we're here tonight in this house knocking on a door and pursuing the presence of God, pursuing the power of God, pursuing the anointing of God. Oh, hallelujah. So, some say, well, it, what, does that change your circumstance? No, sir. It doesn't change anything at all. You know what? Because I've just been just as content sitting on row 32 as I was on row number one. You know what that means? That my circumstance doesn't define where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do in God. Come on. You can put Joseph in a pit, but Joseph can still knock on a door in a pit just as well as he can if you put him on the throne next to... Oh, I said Joseph can knock on a door in a dungeon just like he can if you put him on the throne next to Pharaoh. I've got favor. I've got a miracle. I've got a God that says if you want it, you can have it. You just got to get up and get it. Somebody said it's impossible. Who said it was impossible? Somebody said, it's, it can't be done. Who said it can't be done? With God, all things are possible. With who? With men, it is impossible. But with God. Somebody say, who you with? I'm with God. <laughs> uh, who you with? I'm with God. With God, all things. Somebody say, all things. That don't mean some things, part-time part, part -time things, occasionally some things. He said, with God, all things are possible. And then he went over to another place. And he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Then I jumped over a little farther, and I seen where he said, all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Then I flipped over a little farther and I seen where he said, I can do. 
I can do all things through who? Through Christ which strengtheneth me. You know what? Sometimes I believe we've done. I believe we have come up against impossible situations. And we thought that the devil was keeping us from getting what we needed in God. But can I tell you the devil is not the one that stands between you and an impossible situation. Because if the devil is in his rightful place, he's not standing in front of you. He has been put in subjection. And he has been placed beneath you. Uh, somebody said I'm going to knock the devil out of the way so I can get through no the devil's not standing in front of you the only thing standing between you and an impossible situation is nobody other than Jesus himself Come on, y'all just got real quiet because you don't know what I'm talking about. The devil doesn't stand between you and impossibilities. Jesus stands between you and impossibilities. He said the only way you're going to cross over into an impossible place is you've got to go through me to get it. Jesus said, I am the door. I am. Come on, y'all ain't really helping me now. I said, Jesus said, I am the door. You can come through me and you can come by me. I don't want you going through a window. I don't want you sneaking around the back. If you want to overcome sin, if you want to overcome the battle, if you want to overcome the test, if you can go through Jesus, there ain't nothing you can't overcome. There ain't nothing you can't get through. There ain't a body. They ain't nothing, they ain't nothing you can't get through. Jesus says, if you can go through me, it's yours. Oh, come on. You know what that means? That means I don't have to get up every day and rebuke the devil for three hours before I can have victory. Oh, I got to get up and say, Jesus, where you are, I'm coming. Jesus, Jesus, I'm coming through you to get it. My miracles in Jesus, my healings in Jesus, my blessings in Jesus, my deliverances in Jesus, my breakthroughs in Jesus. Come on, you hear me tonight. If you want it, you can have it, but you got to go through Jesus to get it. I said you've got to go through Jesus to get it. How many tonight can say, Lord, that one thing I desire, I'm not going to hold back and I'm not going to refrain. I am ready to pursue the presence of the Holy Ghost in order to receive. I wonder, I wonder why is it that we take too many shortcuts to try to get what God wants us to have. When God has already ordained a, a very strategic plan in order for you to have what He desires. Come on, somebody said, I don't, I don't know. I never I thought about me having a desire, but you know God has a desire too. His desire is that our desire comes looking for Him. His desire is when His eyes roam to and fro throughout the earth, can I find a man? Can I find a woman? Can I find somebody? Come on, I believe that's what happened to Jacob. But Jacob was a man who thought he had to make things happen for himself. You know what I learned a long time ago? I learned this. I learned that I don't have to make room for my anointing. My anointing makes room for me. I don't have to try to make things happen for myself. That if I'll just be still and know that he's God, it'll work out in its own time. And it'll do and it'll work out a whole lot better than what I tried to do for myself. How many's ever had to make try to make things happen for yourself? And you spent more time beating a dead horse than you did have having victory over anything in your life because you try to do it within your capabilities and you try to do it within your own means. It doesn't work that way. Our faith is, is that we trust in Him and He will work it out. How many believes that? God don't need you taking shortcuts to get something He's already named in your life. God doesn't need you to try to cut corners in order to get a blessing. God's already got a blessing with your name on it. God's already got a healing with your name on it. He's all, It's already... It's already been ordained for you and Jacob is a man that has tried to do everything he can to receive the promise of God without going through the will of God to get it and so we find that he has manipulated he has deceived his own father he has cheated out his own brother he has tried to make things happen for himself he has tried to work it out on his own account but God has another plan God doesn't want Jacob climbing through 
the window. He doesn't want him trying to underhand and undermine people in order to get a blessing that he's already told his granddaddy. I'm going to bless you and your seed and you're going to be, come on, you're going to be the father of many nations. God doesn't want Jacob trying to go through the shortcut to get that. It's already his if he'll just follow the plan. And God has to get this man who has tried to work it out on his own. And he gets him in a place all by himself. Gets him somewhere, I don't know, maybe out in the wilderness. Gets him out there secluded from no people, no opinions, no, no persuasions, nothing. Just him and God. And all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, a man shows up. And he wrestles with Jacob until the break in the day. Somebody said, who is that man? Was it Gabriel? No, it wasn't Gabriel. Because when Jacob said, tell me what your name is, he says, what you want to know my name for? In other words, he was saying, I'm not Gabriel, and I'm not Michael, and I'm not just some angel coming down here. Come on, how many knows there was a name that hadn't been revealed till it came to a little virgin named Mary? Come on, there was a mystery that had been hid. He hadn't even, dis he hadn't even disposed that to the world yet. And suddenly a mysterious man shows up in a wilderness and goes to wrestling with Jacob until the breaking of day. Out there wrestling, out there struggling, out there pursuing each other. What is it that you really want, Jacob? What is it that you're really after? What is it that you're really hungry for? Are you hungry for a big name, a better title? Are you hungry for a, another step up the ladder? Or are you hungry for me? Are you, what is, what is your desire? What is driving you? What is motivating you? Oh, come on. You, you, you find out what motivates a man by what lights his fire. And when you light his fire, you'll find out what it, what it takes that drives him and what pushes his buttons. And all of a sudden, Jacob's out there wrestling with the Lord. He's wrestling with the same one that's going to manifest himself in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's out there wrestling with the same one that's going to come up out of a flame of fire off of the altar and tell Manoah he's going to have a son by the name of Samson. He's out there wrestling with the same one that showed up for his granddaddy Abraham and grandmama Sarah and said, Abraham at 100 and Sarah at 90, you're going to bring forth a son. Come on, it's the same one. Come on, sometimes God will send you an angel and then sometimes God will just show up himself. Because when God, when God sent an angel and an angel can't get your attention after he sent his messenger and his messenger can't get your attention, God will show up himself to get your attention. God will come himself. He gets out there wrestling with Jacob and he says a very, very profound thing. He says to him, he said, Jacob, let me go. I struggled with that for about two or three days because I couldn't understand why that the Lord would get Jacob in a place all by himself and then desire for Jacob to let him go. I struggled with that. I said, Lord, you're the one that said I'd never leave you and I'd never forsake you. I, I, I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. I've got you engraved in the palm of my hand. I said, Lord, why would you get Jacob in that place where you wanted him and then ask him to let you go? And I struggled with that for about two days. And we were in a hotel and I was getting ready for church. I was combing my hair and I felt that thing roll over in my heart. And he finally spoke the answer to me. He said, I wasn't trying to get Jacob to let me go because I desired to get away from him. He said, I asked Jacob to let me go because I was wondering what he was willing to do to hold on to get that thing that he was desiring. Oh, yes. God, Jacob said, I will not let you go. He says, let me go. He said, no, I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to come on. I wish that, I wish an anointing would get on you like that. I wish there would be something get a hold of you like that where you said, God, you're not getting away from me. You're not going, you're not going to go anywhere that I'm not going to go after you. You can't make a move that I'm not going to go after you. Come on. There's God's, God's put a door in front of some of you but God's wanting to know what are you willing to do to knock down the door and receive what is behind the door somebody said Somebody said, my gift's behind the door, my talent's but No, sir. Why would you just knock down a door to get a gift when you can knock down the door and receive the giver himself? I wonder, I wonder how many times God has been so displeased because we sought after the gift and we forgot about the giver. 
We saw, oh, come on. We somebody, y'all hear me tonight. How many times has God said, I'm I'm everything you need? And we were trying to take shortcuts and go this way and that way, trying to make it happen. Because as Emily's preached before, I can I'll I'll, I'll quote her. I'll say she said, I've heard her say many times that sometimes we have sought after what's in God's hands instead of seeking after God's face. But the moment you go to seeking God's face, you're gonna get what's in his hand. Come on. You hear me tonight. I want us to know that. God desires for you to have. The Bible says this. He says, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. To become. To become what? To become everything that he said I am, everything that I ever was, and everything that I ever will be. It's God's desire that you become like Him. Somebody said, I'm far cry from it. I am too. Join the club. But I, there's something in us that got, the closer we get to God is the more we become like Him. Hallelujah. I said the closer that I can, I can stand over here and if a mirror is on that wall over there, I can tell that it's me, but it's very faint. I can, I can see my image and I can see my silhouette. I know that it's me, but the moment that I begin to draw closer, closer to the mirror I can begin to see that that image in the mirror looks a whole lot like me and I can see more clarity in what the mirror is trying to tell me and the word of God says that we were made in his image and we were made after his likeness that means that God has a desire that when he looks at you he sees himself that when he looks into your eyes he could come on he looks come on how many knows the eyes are the window to the soul that when God looks into your eyes he looks into that thing which is in you and I want God to know that when he looks in the depths of my heart and in the depths of my spirit he sees a desire that says I don't want to just be a I don't want to just be a bench warmer I don't want to be a pew warmer I don't want to just come to church and be a puppet and raise my hands when I'm told to I don't want to just stand because I'm told to I don't want to just come on I want to do it because there's a desire in me there's something come on there's something within me already got a hold of the reins and if you'll draw nigh to God he will draw nigh to you. How many can lift your hands to heaven tonight and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go. I will not stop knocking until that door opens. I'll not stop asking until I have received. I will not stop seeking until I find. Stand to your feet all over the house of God. Come on, musicians, back to the instruments quickly. Every hand lifted all over this house. Come on, every hand lifted all over the sanctuary. Come on, why don't you just lift your voice right now and just begin to call on him. I believe God feel the Holy Ghost right now. As we're moving into this altar service, I feel a shift taking place. And there's some of you tonight on this Thursday night. Come on, this is even a different, this is a different, even a different revival than what than what we used to have here. We're used to going Sunday through Wednesday. But for some reason God orchestrated it on a Thursday through a Sunday this time it's the only way we could get it to work out but you know what you know what I believe brother Kitty I believe with all of my heart that they may be somebody here that, that could be here on Thursday Friday or Saturday that couldn't have been here Monday Tuesday or Wednesday and because of that the Holy Ghost has come looking for you and said my desire for you is that you draw a little closer and not just close enough to where you feel better and appease your conscience but that you get close come on no wonder David said one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after David you know what I believe David understood David understood this he understood when he said I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in tents of wickedness Amen. somebody said well I, doorkeepers what's, what's so special about that well if a doorkeeper is keeping the door, that means he's close to the door. And the only way you can knock on a door is to get close to it. I said the only way you can knock on a door, I, I'm not telepathic. I can't stand over here and knock on that door. I've got to get near the door. I've got to get close to the door. I've got to draw nigh to the door. And when I get close to the door, then I can knock on the door. And when I begin to knock on the door, then something is going to happen. Because my response, my, my action, I mean, those faith that that works is what? 
dead. So if my faith without works is dead, then there is a response from God that is held in captivity. Because until you make a move and until you knock on the door, God can't respond the way he wants to in your life. And so David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. That You know what? That makes total sense of why David's in there. He's took off his kingly robe. He's laid off his crown. He's laid down his scepter. And he's got somebody said, David got in there with no clothes on. No, sir. David didn't get in there with no clothes on. David was down to a servant's tunic. He was down to a linen ephod. He was in there. He got in there after everybody was gone. David got in there and went to dancing before the Lord with all of his might around that Ark of the Covenant. And his wife was looking through a window. And the Bible says that she despised him in her heart. Let me tell you what, the people that's against you ain't people that's going to come through a door. They're going to be those that are looking through a window. Come on, you hear me tonight? The, 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 the people that's in your life that are looking through a window, they're not worth fooling with. But let me tell you what, the reason why David can shout and he can have victory in his life is he didn't go through a window to get where he got. He went through a door. Come on, he entered into the presence of Almighty God. So, so as I'm opening this altar, this is my question to you. Are you going to come through the door or are you going to be a window watcher? You can, wa you can watch through the window and you can admire from a distance. Or you can say, I'm not going to stare through the window. I'm going in through the door. And I'm going to receive what the Holy Ghost has for me tonight. Come on, make your way out of your seats and come get in this altar. Come quickly. Come on, move out of your seats tonight. If you need a touch from God, if you need a miracle in your life, come on. You need a blessing. What are you willing to do to get it? Come on. Come on, Cornerstone. Respond to the Holy Ghost tonight. And get out of your seats and come get in this altar. Throw your hands in the air and say, God, I'm here to, I'm here to not I'm here to receive I am here to seek out and find what the Holy Ghost has for me tonight come on make your way out of your seats as many as can come on get in here tonight the Holy Ghost wants to move for somebody God's want to know what are you willing to do to get it what are you willing to lay down to have it what are you willing to give up to get through Yes, that's what God wants for you tonight. Victory that overcomes. Come on, lift your hands all over this house and begin to magnify the Lord of hosts. He's here in this house tonight. If you're a minister in this house, begin to pray with these that's in the altar tonight. Go ahead and sing, brother. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, preachers, begin to pray with these in the altar tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your hands all over this house. Begin to worship him. Come on. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, the Holy Ghost is wanting somebody to knock. Knock until you open the doors open to you. Ask until you've received. Come on, somebody. Somebody turn your faith loose. Turn your victory loose. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come on, the Holy Ghost wants to move in your life tonight. Somebody that said, I'm, I'm, I've almost gotten there. I've been real close, but I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to knock down the door. I'm ready to enter in. I'm ready. I've been, I've been on the sideline too long. I've watched from a distance too long.
on, if you need if you need a touch from God tonight. Come on, if you need a touch from God tonight. Believe God for what His Word says. Believe God for a miracle. Tell the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. I'm not going to let down until you move. I'm not going to give up until this thing turns around. I'm not, I'm, I didn't come here to get close and not receive. I didn't come here to just get within reaching distance and not take a hold of that which God has ordained for my life. Come on, if you need prayer tonight, if you need to be saved, whatever it is that you have need of, why don't you come? If you need a touch from the Holy Ghost, come on tonight. He's here to move for you. Yes, he is.
lay my burden down. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, how many can say, I'm not going to let go till I get it? I'm not going to stop knocking till it opens. I'm not going to stop asking till I receive it. And I'm not going to stop seeking until I find it. How many could give you praise tonight? Thank God that my breakthrough is just a knock away. My blessing's just a knock away. Somebody said, how long have I got to knock until it opens? How long does that take? Don't know. But if you'll knock, it'll open. If you'll seek, you're going to find. And if you ask, come on. How many can say, I'm, I'm going to ask God for a God moment? Come on. I'm ready for a God moment in my life. I'm ready for something to happen that cannot be explained. And it cannot, come on. You know what I had to laugh at? And I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor. When we were buying, when we were trying to get plane tickets to come out here, we tried our best to fly through Tulsa. We wanted to fly through Tulsa. But it was cra the craziest flights you've ever seen in your life. We will have to fly through two different airports to get to Tulsa. And then some of them were at 5 o'clock in the morning or late. I mean, it was, it, I'd never seen it so crazy in all my life. And so finally, we got those flights through Arkansas. And today, do you know that the flights that we were looking at to come out here were almost double the price of what it was that we had bought? And we come out here today on those flights for the price of half the cost. Somebody said, that don't mean nothing. Let me tell you what, it means a whole lot to me because there ain't no way I could have worked that out myself. Sometimes God just lets you have a moment where he says, you know what? You may have to fight to get it. You may have to go through some things to get what you're looking for. But by the time it's over, God's going to give you double for your trouble. God's going to turn this thing around. What the devil meant for evil, God's going to make it good. And, and when you look back over it, you can, you can realize within yourself, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. Take that, devil. We're here. We made it. And God is going to move. Come on. Somebody give God a shout of praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a big praise one more time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, help us out now. We're running this revival on in through Sunday night. Amen. If you can come out tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, if you don't have church in your own church on Sunday morning, come on out at 1045. We'll be here 6 o'clock Sunday night. Amen. Praise God. We're just getting started. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Bowman's got a table set up out here in the West Foyer. And uh, there's some CDs on there. They'll be a great blessing to you. Amen. This music and, and uh, this, this anointing. Uh, the oil flows to this ministry, and, and I believe I believe that uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a blessing to you. If you haven't got one of his CDs, pick one up on the way out. Amen, and help this ministry as you do. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We do do me a favor. Call somebody up and just tell them about the revival. Tell them about the services. Amen. Tell them you got blessed tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Did you get blessed tonight? I don't want you to make it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome word tonight. Thank you, Jesus.